Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the final cut bro. Today we are going to be trying to recreate some effects that I did about three years ago. Now I'm going to have kind of a long intro, so there are chapters if you want to skip past. This tutorial is basically going to be um, kind of an overview of how to recreate these effects in motion and we're gonna do one in particular so I'll get into that but you can skip ahead if you so desire about three years ago I had this grand vision for this epic VFX short and I brought it up to my boss and said hey can I create this for you and kind of gave him an outline of what I wanted to make and he said yes which is awesome but um, I realized I had zero knowledge in After Effects. I had never used it before, so I had a ton of learning to do. So I took about six months to create this about two minute long short film where I did all the effects in After Effects and then all the editing in Final Cut Pro. And it was an awesome learning experience, but at that time I thought that After Effects was kind of the only way to do effects. And I'm very wrong. You can definitely do similar stuff in motion if you have a little know-how. Now, it's not gonna be perfect, but I think it would be a really great exercise to take an effect or two from this, try and recreate it in motion, and you know, just get into blend modes and motion tracking and all sorts of stuff. So if that interests you, stick around. We're gonna do kind of a grand overview of recreating this particular effect in motion. So I will play the final product for you really quickly just so you can get an idea and you're not left hanging if you decide you don't like the end effect. So let's get into it. First thing I did was actually get some motion tracking down. There's not a lot of movement in this scene, but it definitely helps. And after I got that all tracked, I actually added a rectangle and applied the motion track just to make sure that everything was locked in and it seemingly did a pretty good job. Then the next thing I wanted to work on was the orb. That seemed like the most important part, so I really wanted to nail that and I started working on that first. So I just created a small circle shape and I originally tried motion tracking the orb onto his hand but it did not work so i ended up having to manually move the orb around but it really didn't take that long i just jumped forward each frame with the arrow keys and then moved that orb over the top of the original ball he was holding then i duplicated the orb i actually did this twice and i added a gaussian blur to each of the new layers one with a small amount and one with a large amount and this is what created kind of a nice blooming glow effect around the ball after that, I linked up the opacity of the glowing orbs to the main orb so that I wouldn't have to animate each one individually as it passed behind his coat. Then I just quickly animated keyframes for the main orb's opacity right as it passed behind and that did the trick. From there, I actually wanted to add some flaring to the orb, so I went ahead and jumped into the generators and just found the stock lens flare effect and it actually worked surprisingly well. I wasn't anticipating it working that well, so um, yeah, use that stock lens flare when you get the chance. Now I didn't really feel like animating that flare by hand, so I actually attached the flare to the orb movement using some link modifiers and that saved me some more animation trouble down the road. So then I decided I would do some roto work and cut out his coat as the flare went in front of it, but it ended up not working out very well. And I ended up getting better results by just toning down the flare as it went behind him. And uh, it's so fast that you don't even notice it. From there, I decided to just dial in the color of the flare. And I did that by actually using the color selector and picking some of the brightest parts of the snow. That way it had the same color tint and just looked a little bit more realistic to the surrounding area. After that, I added some randomized parameters to stuff like the intensity of the flare and the streaks and stuff like that. And it just added a little variation to the flare and made it have a little bit more energy behind it. After that, I just marked the spot where I wanted all of the power to really hit. And that would be important for adding like the shock wave and the lighting and all that sort of stuff. So it was important I added that with shift M. 
So now it was time to get into the super fun stuff and that was adding in the smoke effects, which to do that, I actually just found some free ink droplets into water online. It's that black ink dropping into water. It ended up working perfect. It had that cool cloud kind of formation look that I really wanted. So I just brought those in and I applied the multiply blend mode onto that and the multiply blend mode essentially just says anything that's white it will be transparent and uh, so that gives it a really nice effect on the video clip after that i added a red solid and put a hard light blend mode on that um, and that just gave it that really cool red light look that you see um, and it just felt really sinister and evil so it was kind of fun to mess with that but uh, I ended up, after that, masking it and animating the mask in a way so that it looked like it was creeping further and further onto the screen. From there, I just kept adding in more smoke elements and it ended up getting a little bit overbearing. So I was trying to figure out ways to distinguish the depth and I ended up coming up with setting the color on the further back elements to be almost a, a blue rather than completely black and that just added kind of a haze effect to the further elements and just integrated it a little bit better into the the video. After that I just added some particles that I actually downloaded from Video Copilot for free and they just worked really really well in adding a lot of depth to the scene, a lot of energy. So I just dropped those on top, I set the blend mode to screen and I colorized them to be red and it just added a whole lot to the scene in my opinion. After that I wanted to work on the impact from the orb so I ended up finding these uh, assets I downloaded a while ago from Premium Beat for free and they just had some really cool fantasy hits and stuff that really added a lot to the scene so I just integrated those, set the blend mode to add and I colorized them as needed. From there I just added a circle shape and I got rid of the fill and set the outline edge to be a brush type and that was just to give it some jagged edges. I then added a rate modifier to the rotation on that and I just set that pretty high so it would be spinning super fast and it almost looked like the particles are flying off of the edge of it. And it had a pretty decent effect, I was trying to replicate the uh, the saber effects that Video Copilot had created for After Effects and it wasn't as good but it, it got the job done for what I needed. Then using the offset parameters I animated the right on effect of the orb and uh, then I just duplicated the orb three times creating different glow variants and it worked great. I then just started bringing in some other assets from Premium Beat and dragged those on here. Premium Beat should have really sponsored this video. I use a lot of their stuff. And, uh, and just added that over the top and it added just a nice little bit of dimension to the orb around him. So seeing this, I was noticing how it really felt like the orb wasn't integrated into the world. Um, so I thought that I would add a really bright patch around the orb on the ground so you could actually see how it's affecting the surrounding area. And that definitely made it feel way more integrated into the scene. I then started getting creative, adding various assets. I added different smoke elements and I added these different um, orb elements from Premium Beat. And uh, some of them worked, some of them didn't, so I just kept the ones that did. And then I got to start working with the shockwave effect, and this was really simple. I just grouped everything into one major group, and I just called that the adjustment group, much like an adjustment layer. And I added the droplet effect that's built into the distortion filters, and it worked really well. It was actually far easier to do this in motion than it was in After Effects. From there, I really wanted the smoke to start interacting with the orb as it kind of hit the shield. And uh, so to do that, I added a bulge filter to some of the smoke assets to make it kind of grow around the protective orb rather than going through it. This ended up working all right, but I feel like if I had tweaked it a bit more, I could have gotten a better end result. 
So I did an export to just see where we were at and see how I liked it and it was starting to come along but it definitely needed some improvements. The first thing I noticed was that the smoke really wasn't engulfing him all that much and it didn't seem like danger was looming like I wanted it to. So I ended up dropping in some smoke assets I had from Premium B. The problem was this was white smoke and I needed the smoke to be black so I ended up adding a negative filter to those and then just applying the multiply blend mode and that seemed to do the trick. I then just added the bulge filter to that and animated it on as the protective orb came up and it wrapped around really nicely. Very happy with how that particular effect came out. I then just did the same thing with some more smoke assets and it really added so much more to the scene and really felt like he was under attack rather than just kind of a football field away. The last thing I did is I wanted to make sure that it felt like he was the one on the offensive now so I ended up adding a cloud generator and animating the cloud generation to be pushing into the smoke and then just applied a screen and add filter to the glowing parts and it worked great. Though I will say if I had more time I might have defined it a little bit better and made it look a little bit more realistic but um, it had already been over seven hours of working on this and I really needed to get this tutorial done. I exported it and gave it a quick watch to make sure I was happy with where it was going and it was working but I noticed a few things. The glow was just a little too intense and um, the protective orb was actually not aligned with the circle so I just made those quick adjustments and brought it into Final Cut. In Final Cut Pro I just did a bunch of sound design, I added my handheld preset that I've created and I added an earthquake shake right as the main impact happens. It added a bunch of power to the impact and I'm really happy with how that turned out. And with all of that, we have our final product. So if this long and somewhat in-depth video was helpful to you or insightful, consider pressing that like button and let me know if you like this format. It's kind of a fun way to go about creating a tutorial. Um, I definitely have stuff that I would like to go more in-depth on, so I'll have future tutorials for that. But uh, hopefully this broad overview gives you a good idea of how you might be able to do some effects in motion. So if you like this video, make sure you press that like button and also consider subscribing if you're not already as I have brand new videos every single week. With that being said, I will see you next Wednesday.